Hey folks, Mark here. Thanks so much for dropping by the channel. It is always very, very much appreciated. Looking at the Carbon Cub S2, highly modified, clear side windows. Yep. Simulated clear windshield. Couldn't do a full clear windshield because it would structurally, uh, structurally, uh, uh, put the aircraft at risk of coming apart in the air, so can't have that. Uh, what this is about is, uh, what is it about? Oh! If you if you've uh, if you're interested in the Carbon Cub S2, especially if you fly it, um, and if you've seen any of my recent videos where I've uh, uh, come to what I believe is a, is just a, a gorgeous setup for this airplane, and that setup is uh, I use the uh, I don't use the uh, the stock hole on the elevator horn, which would be the lower hole as the plane is sitting now. I use the upper hole. Okay, that gives me much more elevator authority. Ditto for the rudder. I'm using the inner hole on the uh, rudder horn, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, which gives me much more rudder authority. Now that, those things there, along with having a slightly aft CG, and I say slightly, I emphasize slightly, those things uh, previously mentioned along with the slightly aft CG have turned this airplane, uh, in, in, and it already flew great out of the box, it flies great out of the box, but when you get to the intermediate level or above, and uh, and you and you fly this plane because this plane is certainly worthy of flying, in my opinion, uh, at the intermediate level and above because it's a great airframe. But anyway, when you get to that point, uh, you may learn, as I fortunately did through some help from some of my friends and uh, folks on the community in the community, uh, when you get the plane set up uh, the way I've got it, oh my gosh, she comes alive. Oh my gosh, slow flying, turning, uh, landing, taking off. She takes off in very, very uh, short a distance, yet very slowly, if I want. It's a beautiful thing to see. Check it out on my channel if you, if you want to. Uh, and the landing. So I got real long, thick, grabby grass. And when I say grabby grass, I'm, I'm quoting Cheryl from Ian and Cheryl on Ian's RC Exploits on YouTube. Uh, so I got that going on. But now she lands like a dream because of the setup. So it's the uh, changing the holes on the elevator and the rudder. Uh, and then it's my CG. Now, the CG that I'm using is 66.6 uh, .6 millimeters back from the leading edge of the wing. Um, that's what I'm using. Let's see if I can pick up the plane and show that to you. I think I can probably do it. Can I? Let's try it. Well, let's not try it. Let's do it. All right, let's see. It's going to be interesting one-handed, but we can make it happen. All right, here, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. All right, it's kind of a mess here at RC Aviation Crawling Headquarters, but it's all right. All right, so... There's a little dot there that you can see dead center screen. You can just see it dead center screen there. And that's 66.6 .6 millimeters back from the leading edge of the wing. Dead center screen little dot. Okay, so that's it. And that, all right, let's put this beautiful bird down. Uh, you know, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so that's that's the CG that I'm using. So if you have the Super Cup, now, one thing to keep in mind, though, uh, that's really just sort of a very, very, very rough starting point for you to set up your plane to fly like this one does if you want to. Now my plane has been modified. Uh, the foam was cut out on the sides and clear windows were installed. So that's gonna change the weight of the plane ever so slightly. Uh, and then I've added the weight of clear plastic windows for the windows on the sides and for the windshield. So which I think adds a little bit of weight. So, but more than that, much more than those things, I do have <clears throat> pretty scale and uh, quite functional uh, landing gear here. There we go, some more light on. I got some landing gear, do it yourself. Uh, Cub landing gear here. There you go. That's a pretty good view. And that's got some springs and some wood and some uh, paint on it. So that also adds a little bit of weight. So that your your stock out of the box cub, the weight will be slightly different than mine. So my CG may not be exactly perfect for yours. You may have to tweak it just a little bit. But that's that's what I've got going on. That's what I've got going on. Uh, the, I mean the weight of the suspension here isn't very much. Uh, you you can judge for yourself what you think that weighs. And then again, the the the, the, lot, the t a little bit less weight from uh, having the foam come out, but then the plastic windows that went back in place of the foam windows and windshield that weighs a little bit more. So all in all, I would say that it, with the wind the windshield uh, weight and, and and even more than that, the landing gear weight, I'd say my uh, airplane is a little tiny bit nose heavier than yours would be from the windows and the and the uh, landing gear suspension. So just figure that in. Anyway, 66.6 .6 millimeters back from the leading edge of the uh, wing, measured uh, at the wing and fuselage. 
junction, if you will. So there you go. If you want to try the setup I've got going on on yours. Uh, here, let's look at the horns. So let's look at the horns. The horns. All right, let's look at the horns. All right, as you can see, folks, this is not a slick video production. This is a down-home video production. Come to you from Oregon. All right, here we go. Uh, all right, should we get some light on the subject? Let's do it. Light on the subject. Okay, so there's my... Uh, Can you see that? Let's see. Let me get myself in a good position here. Oh, here. Let's look at it from the top. Focus. That's a good camera. Okay, so there we are. I'm in this hole here, and this is the outer hole. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah, the outer hole there. I kind of got fuzz on my finger. <laughs> There's the outer hole there, and I've got it uh, connected to the inner hole. Yeah, we'll look at it from the bottom too. Guess that's a better view. There we go. That's a very good view. Focusing. Okay. Well, we can't have it all. There you go. So that's the inner hole, and that's for the rudder. Oh boy, I, I suggest that. You know, if you if you're familiar with the plane and you're ready to make that move, and then for the, and then that's for the rudder, and then for the elevator. Here. There you go. Upper hole. Stock hole down here, stock hole down there, upper hole there. Yep. Yeah. Uh, now here's another thing. You know, I, I could do the flaps upgrade on this, and you know that'd be cool, it'd be more scale, everything like that. But I'll tell you what, the airplane doesn't need flaps, in my opinion. This plane, the way I've got it set up, and because of its awesome airframe, inherently, folks, this plane flies, in my opinion, again the way I've got it set up and. And when you're doing your stuff right on the sticks, this plane flies uh, so well without flaps, I don't think you need them. I don't think you need them. Uh, I can slow, I and anybody can slow the plane way, way down with the with the CG setup and the full uh, travels on the elevator and the rudder. Um, this bird can be set down as well as if she had flaps, in my opinion. The other thing, the other reason I may not uh, do the flaps conversion is because I don't want to have to tear up uh, go into my you know, scale work that I've done for the windows and stuff. I don't really want to have to mess up around in there. I got seats in there, even the pilot seat and the passenger seat are in there. So I don't really want to mess with that. Um, what else? Seems like there's something else about this bird. Uh, what was it? One more point. Not going to do the flaps. Not going to. Oh, um, oh, I forget. Anyway, yeah. Oh, the other reason is that uh, some of these models are, are like a collectible to me. Uh, I like to have. The, the, the plane, I like to have the original RTF transmitter and fly it on the RTF transmitter in this particular case. Um, you know, it's, it's like a collectible to me. You know, down years from now, I'll say, yep, I still got my original Carbon Cub S2 with the original radio, and I still fly it off the original radio. It's, you know what I mean? I, I, I like that. I like flying the, the, the original plane other than my scale upgrades uh, and the original radio, RTF. Yeah, it's a, it's a collectible. It's a yeah. So that's that's why I still fly this off of the uh, DX uh, S uh, instead of flying it off my uh, NX six because uh, yeah, they go together. And uh, what else? Oh, I I really like the DX S because uh, as you know, if you already have this, uh, you've got a telemetry. You I mean on this RTF radio, you've actually got battery telemetry in the dead center screen. You can see four uh, little places where there's lights dead center yeah you got battery telemetry with this rtf radio uh you start off four four green lights for a fresh charge and it goes down to three two and when you get to two it starts flashing and then it goes to one and then when you're really about to run out and you've got one light left then it starts flashing but it's a, it's a great little telemetry system uh on the, it's very simple but very great uh which comes with the rtf radio and the rtf carbon cub s2 all right uh, that's it, folks. Have a great day. Signing off in uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 